cloud. Thank you. We'll find you. Um, and I think that you can probably see my slide that I put up. Yes. And um, being 5.05 p.m., let me say um, welcome to the artist's reception for Uncommon Threads, Fiber, Quilting, and Weaving Arts, um, a presentation of the San Fernando Valley Arts and Cultural Center SCORE project. We welcome everyone. Um, I'm not going to give my usual spiel about we had to close our brick and mortar uh, place because of the pandemic, but we did. Um, we've really thrive with these virtual online exhibits. And I want to thank everyone that participated in them. Um, it's really, it's just uh, fun putting these receptions on and interacting with people and seeing the wonderful artwork from not only our area, but the entire United States and worldwide. So um, basically welcome to everybody. Um, now let's see, I've got to go to another slide. There we go. So I do need to thank the Los Angeles County Arts and Culture Department, as well as the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs. And that said, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And um, I do not see the juror here. So basically, Ken, if you're ready and I'm ready, um, we're going to start running through the exhibit winners, starting with honorable mentions and going through um, to the extent that we have uh, people with awards, uh, award-winning uh, pieces of artwork. Pat, let me interrupt yeah. for just a second. Can you hold off, um, Carolyn? Can you give a give the juror a phone call and see if she plans on joining us? You're muted or not your volume's down or something. Oh, I didn't see Carolyn. There she is. We can't hear you, Carolyn. We can't hear you. Your mouth's moving, but you're a silent movie. <laughs> Uh, you might try checking some other audio. Uh, if you go to the little carrot to the right of your mute on the lower left side of your screen, uh, and you you can see you may have different audio sources. I got it. Yes, I just got hooked up to a new broadband. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Yay. I'm Lisa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we get so excited that? about certain little things when it comes to Zoom. <laughs> can, you, can you give uh, a call, Carolyn, and see if she's going to No, Carolyn, Carolyn's talking now. We can hear her. Well, I, I already contacted Well, she contacted me and said that she would be here. And I, I wrote back. I said, that's great. So I don't know. Um, I don't even know if I have a phone number for her. But... Um, I do. Could you? Could you? I could try. Okay. Okay. I just checked my email to see if there if she was having a problem getting on or anything like that, but yeah, I didn't see anything. I don't see anything from her either. Um, let's see here. Ken can tell us some jokes for a minute. <laughs> yeah, he's good at that. <laughs> I don't have any artist jokes to tell. I've got musician jokes and, and boating jokes, and I don't have any artist jokes, though. Gosh, you're going to have to get better at that then. She's coming. <laughs> she's coming? Yeah, she's, just, she's just coming on. Oh, oh yay. Can I just say hello from sunny England? Wonderful. Ooh. Not very sunny. sunny. It's early hours of the morning. It's 10 past one in the morning. Oh, my, <gasps> oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now that's devotion. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. 
Okay, I'm just keeping an eye out for her to pop on here. And um, I, I think uh, as soon as she does pop on, uh, we can let her speak for a, a few minutes if she'd like to, and then we'll launch into the um, awards. Yeah. By the way, this was an amazing exhibit. Um, I don't know what I thought was going to be entered into this exhibit, but it, it blew my mind. I'm the one that goes through all of the images and gets prepares them to send them on to uh, our, our website gal. And um, and so I'm, I'm always the first one that gets to really absorb each and every one of these entries. Um, and I was just blown away by by everything that was selected and and entered. So I, I thank every one of you to, for being a part of this fantastic uh, exhibit. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what, uh, what Georgia has to say, our, our juror. Um, and um, I, I'll kind of go over um, what Pat was, was talking about and that, that we were, we had a wonderful brick and mortar um, a space uh, that we had for about six and a half years. And um, uh, we had to close it down because of the pandemic. And we were wondering if we had a future. Uh, we decided to go all virtual, which has been very exciting. Um, we've gotten to meet a lot of artists from around the world. And um, uh, it was the perfect, it was the perfect timing for everything. It just, it just blended in together so well. And, um, and we've really been enjoying what we're doing now. Uh, of course, a lot of our local artists still want to have you know, a space to hang their art. Uh, which we can understand, and so we're trying to deal with that as well. Um, but we're just we're just having fun with this. This is uh, so exciting to meet all these new artists. So um, is uh, is Georgia on yet? She said she was trying to get in, and it wasn't letting her in. Right, she's here. She comes. Yep. Great. Just been admitted. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Yay. And she is joining. And she should be on. And I am Carolyn. Would you like to introduce her? And let me find her in Spotlighter. Okay. I don't see. There she is. Found her. Um, it's E. Friedman Harvey. <laughs> see her but because she's not video i don't think i can spotlight her uh see oh. i think i think she's on oh i think she's on georgia yeah hello georgia hello there welcome thanks i'd like to introduce everyone to Georgia Friedman Harvey, who was our wonderful juror, who was so detailed in everything she was she was doing and presenting to me. She wanted to know if there were specific categories and and all, you know, she just thought of things that we didn't even think of. Um, and I said, no, just pick the best. <laughs> so, so that's exactly what she did. So Georgia, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself and and uh, then we'll get right on to um, having you talk about the award winners. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, let me just change the view so just to Gallic. Um, hi, I'm Georgia, and I'm a longtime curator and arts professional in the in the Southern California area. And I was really honored to do this. I've been involved with a lot of fabric and fiber work in my own work, but also just in the exhibitions I've curated. Um, and I work a lot with um, artists figuring out their legacy projects. So 
Um, some of you I already know, and it was a real pleasure to really be able to dig deep in. I would just say um, that the work was all really, I really enjoyed looking at all of your pieces. And um, I really thought a lot about uncommon threads and what that meant. And because I've had, I've worked on curated quilt shows and all different other fiber shows, I felt like I could really look at your work um, and just think about what each of you wrote. I really appreciated your statements a lot. Um, those helped me a lot in making the decisions. So um, I can talk about the winners if you want. Um, can we put those pictures up so we mm -hmm. can see them and I can talk about them? Yeah, Pat should be able to do that or, or yeah, Barbara. Uh, or Ken. I welcome okay. and I'm going to start with the honorable mentions and go backwards through them to the, the best of show. So just give me a second here and we're going to share it to the screen. And it will take just a second to adjust. There we go. And there we go. So Carolyn, could I don't is oh here we go. Um four generations. I, I have to say that I think that it was one of the hardest things was picking the winners. It was really easy to figure out, not easy, but once I sort of took an overall view and really got to know all of your art, because I looked through the slides probably four or five or six times before you even started to curate. So I felt like I wanted to know the entire group of entries before I started making any calls. And I really picked this because I liked this idea of communicating for generations and using a very time honored um, process of Shibori to do a very contemporary idea. And that was, you know, so I don't know if this artist is here, but I really yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so oh, much. You up? Well, it was nice to see your work. Thank you. Do you want me to tell you? Yes. Talk about what inspired me? Um, yeah, so I've been interested in my family tree for several years now. And then I lived in Japan uh, for three and a half years. I moved back to the US. And in Japan, I discovered the um, this ancient tradition of Shibori. And, um, and I did workshops there, but I didn't, um, you know, we didn't have enough time to actually learn what this is, which is stitch shibori. And so I took classes online um, last summer and then I started learning and learning how to indigo dye and everything. And this piece is really honoring my grandmother who emigrated from Japan to the US and she's in the center and she had uh, three men in her life um, a boyfriend where she had a illegitimate daughter, then my grandfather where she had six kids. And then um, she married my step grandfather after my real grandfather died. And, um, anyway, she, she married him in Manzanar. And so this is the, so the open circles and squares are her family um, from that first daughter in Japan and then their kids and um, her kids and then um, her kids her grandchildren and then um the right side basically is my family so my father's brothers and sisters and then my generation and then the newest generation and i just wanted to you know somehow visualize it in <laughs> and express myself using um shibori can you explain what shibori really is oh it's I, i'm um, familiar I call it Japanese tie dye, but it's any sort of uh, it's a stitch. Well, I use stitch stitching to create the resist. So um, I'm, you know, drawing the circles and the squares and I'm stitching either the outline or I do concentric circles or squares to create the different patterns. Um, and then you, you know, you pull up the stitches as tight as you can and then you dip the fabric in um, indigo. And, you know, I dip this many times to get, you know, a rich blue color. 
and then you undo the stitches and I mean, that's the most amazing step is just revealing all that resist. It's that's very awesome. interesting, very interesting. Thank you. They look almost almost like chromosomes. Oh, that's, <laughs> Chromosome so, patterns. that's so interesting. Huh? I'm a biologist, but wh where do you see the chromosomes on the- I just the see, animal? I just see like, like central strips, like the, there's some <laughs> bands that look yeah. like chromosome strips. That's interesting. Well, they're very organic. Uh -huh. Don't you see that in the middle, yeah. kind of in the middle? Right, I get it now. Because I'm a geneticist, <laughs> so that's so funny. <gasps> Wow. That's... Well, it, came, it came through. Wow. <laughs> wow. But I did see, well, I that, see that. So I love I love hearing what other people see. That's what I see. <laughs> well, especially <laughs> generational. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's so cool. And I have been to Manzanar. I mean visiting. I was a visit. I've seen Oh, that. yeah. I, I went in I 2015. And Kathy, the other thing I want to say is it's 45 by 45 inches. Right. So I think we don't get the full impact with your piece, but to do a shibori that size and that intricately is was a real passion, a real, you know, a real showing of your love of the the art and of this medium. It takes a lot of patience. I'm sure. Yeah. It was a labor of love. <laughs> Go on the next one, Pat. So this one um, by Heather Schroeder. Are you here? Heather here? I, I, I was very drawn to this piece because I know what it takes to do this kind of stitching on um, with free hands with the sewing. And she so captured the emotions of people. It wasn't just, you know, four figures. You really got the sense of this family and them being together. And um, it was just such a lovely composition and that she left the threads hanging, which made me think, you know, that life, it wasn't not, everything is perfectly clean and neat and orderly. and. I think that just her message in this came across so strongly. It took me a I while to figure out it. what was going on with this. Oh. <laughs> but I, I really, I really think it's uh, so different than anything I've ever seen before. That doesn't sound like she's here. No, she yeah. isn't here. I do not see her, so unless she has a different name. <laughs> she right, so the next one. Here we go. Um, no, she's here. <laughs> is Deborah here? Yes, I Deborah am here. is here. Yes. Okay. I'm and Deborah, you had a number of entries. So um, I really enjoyed seeing your pieces, but this one I was particularly drawn to because. Um, I have a pretty big, good background in felting in needle and uh -huh. wet and all different levels of felting. And so what I really appreciated was um, your use of color and how you had the color and yet it, each color block, you could tell where it stood, but it also had this nice creating an overall pattern. And I think your placement of the pocket just like highlighted the piece and took it to another level. And while I loved all of your work, this one in particular, how you finished the sleeves and the collar. And I wanted, when I was thinking about um, honoring the people who would um, get awards, I also wanted it to represent a lot of the different areas and medias that you all shared in your entries. And so um, while um, I picked Deborah's as the winner, you'll see throughout the exhibition that um, I, I honored the time honored tradition of felting. And so, but Deborah, your piece just particularly had that sense of a, a full composition as well as a wearable piece of art. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Are you wearing it right now? I am wearing it right now oh. yeah. to, to wear it to the to the uh, opening tonight, right? Oh, that's 
Wonderful. I thought I recognized it, but I, 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 I first I wanted to say, is it really a wearable? But then I saw you wearing it, so I knew it was. <laughs> right. It's definitely a wearable. So this is, oh, this, it's got a huge collar. I can, uh -huh. Uh -huh. oh my gosh, look at that. And it is very comfortable, very drapeable. That's, that's my go-to and it's, I'm sitting here in a chair, but <laughs> I put a little elastic around the way the uh, arms and I'm uh -huh. not a seamstress. So uh, I really enjoy making wearables, but I, I know that any seamstress would cringe when they see what I do. So <laughs> just saying, but if you're working with felting, you're starting with something that is, it starts out 50% uh, bigger then it's going to be right. It, uh -huh, it shrinks uh -huh. 50%. So you have to start out with a huge resist. Oh, oh my and God. so, and usually most of them are, are made that it's, it's one piece. They're not sewn together. So the only thing I sewed was around the arms to add oh. elastic. So, oh, but otherwise it's, it's, and the button had to sew the button on, but otherwise nothing right. is, is stitched. So Oh my gosh. Wow. Anyway, that's incredible. That's incredible. I appreciate it. So thank you very much. <laughs> and and Deborah, it looks like you yeah. have at the very bottom, some Nuno felting. Or I, the wolf, the, I have, I have silk on both sides of this. Silk it's, on both sides. it's yes, it's reversible. So I have Merino in between Merino wool and it's silk on both sides, both sides. Right. So it's have, a you, same, have you have you washed it? Well, it's it's washable because when I when it's wet felted, which means I start out like I said, fifty percent bigger, and I use right. soap and water to shrink it to where it is. I so see. I see. That's that's what shrinks it, and it doesn't really shrink if you think about it. The fibers just mat together, so that's yeah. really what it does. So. Hmm. I've been a hairstylist for 40 years, so I didn't realize until I retired that I've been a fiber artist my whole life. <laughs> That's hair right. being That's my right. hair being my fiber. And That's so right. belting oh, and you, working with wool is so much like working with hair. So very interesting. Anyway. Yeah. Thank, thank so you, thank, Deborah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, we can go on. So is um, Lisa here? Hi. Hi, Lisa. So um, Hi. I, you did a couple of pieces that you entered, but I was particularly, I, I like this because first you did a very realistic interpretation of a heart. Like you look at this and you understand this is the human heart, not this a strong is, heart. And I- This is not my work. This is not. No, it's nope. mine. <laughs> so, yeah, I vest. I did a ankle band and vest. Yeah, but no, this I is the uh, Frederici, who's right yeah, up there. Yeah, this is mine. Okay, great. So is but Lisa, you entered more than one piece. If my memory yes. is right, and yes. I, what I was saying was that immediately when you looked at this you understood you were looking at a human heart and not an interpretation of a heart. And I just um, felt like you had really um, created a very interesting composition that you wanted to get up closer to. And I will say this for everyone, that while it's wonderful we have this ability to do exhibitions online, um, I want to come and see each of your pieces in person because I was afraid I was missing details um, when I was jurying and um, that really um, bothered me that I couldn't get up close and personal with each of your pieces. But um, thank you for entering and thinking that the heart could be elevated to a piece of art like this. Thank you. What are the little dots on there? Are those pins? Those are pins. So uh -huh. I typically either hand sew or machine sew most of my pieces, but this piece is pretty large and I couldn't get it in my sewing machine. 
So those are all of the pins that it takes to put the, the strips of fabric together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I decided instead of sewing it, I would just sew it to the actual canvas and leave the pins in. So it had this like, um, like pin tuck effect almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so very, well, interesting. very, very interesting. Thank you. I think the pins added another, it gave it dimension when in fact it's just on a board. And I think you effectively did that created dimension within what might not be something with dimension. Benjamin, thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. It's quite an honor. <laughs> Lisa, do you have some yeah. kind of medical background that helps? <laughs> no, um, I am a high school art teacher who just has a strong affinity for anatomy. <laughs> okay. Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, they, they say do what's inside you. I took that literally. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, I also thought I was wondering if there was a personal message coming from the heart, you know, um, I, well, I mean, you have the, 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 this heart, and then you have the actual heart. And I was wondering if there was some sort of a, a, a message that was coming from it. Um, well, this piece, I was trying to like capture that um like religious connotation of like an icon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but for the most part there's it's it's just a heart because that's what i'm drawn to mm -hmm, i okay. i do silk gi tracks and uteruses and you <laughs> name it i've made it out of silk <laughs> very good very good <laughs> thank you okay i think we can go on so is Jessica here? I am. I'm here. I so, Jessica, in why I um, selected your pieces because I'm very aware of what it takes to create coil baskets, and you had such command of turning this into this very abstract but very understandable mask, um, and so it felt like it pulled from historical roots and took a very time honored tradition of basket making to create this. And so that was, um, I know you entered several and so it was hard to pick, but I wanted to um, bring this to everybody's attention, your work. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, yeah, I was doing a lot of drawings of faces and I had, um, I studied fiber at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago many years ago, and, and we had learned coiling in a um, just an intro to fiber class. And I, I was actually like drawing these loops. And it, so I, um, about five or so years ago, I started um, doing this series. And I've actually been making them more recently as um, wearables, and um, they're, they're a little bigger and they have things coming off of them and things like that, too. So I, um, but this is, this is, um, but I've also really, this one's very dear to my heart too, with like the colors and the, um, it's, it's smaller um, rope. And so the time that it went into it was pretty um, intense. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Georgia, you, if you would like to talk about this. Well, I did. Yeah. But I would just say there was that intentionality that you did came through and that's why it didn't just feel like a piece it felt much more like every coil was purposely placed and you thought about the whole composition and there was a good balance to it thank you so much hello uh, yeah I'm, I'm on a zoom meeting right now irene i'll call you back bye um, bye, -bye. um so this piece um I think we're, where are we with the awards at this point? Because I don't know, I'm sorry, I didn't print out a list. Uh, this is first place. This first is place. first place. And I think she's here. Let me find her. Is April yes. Right here. Uh, 
So okay. it's not letting me spotlight you for some so, reason. So this piece by April, and I hope you'll talk about it for a couple of minutes, but it was really your write up that made me really drew me into this piece um, because it needed it needed that label on the wall, but it's such a powerful piece and your and what you wrote about was so powerful. Um, and yet, you know, you used a simple um, connection of, of these lines of the um, canvas squares. And so it, in its simplicity, it communicates so much. And I just felt that you, I wanted to recognize you for, for what was, what this piece stood for. Thank you, Georgia. I um, was really shocked when I opened up my email that day and saw that I won first place. I, um, I've been making art for about 10 years as a way to find uh, my spirit and to have a place to, um, to speak and just, uh, to have my voice, you know, said. And um, I'm a bookkeeper, I'm a professional bookkeeper, and I work with all these nonprofits. And people are going to hand me the Geek Award because I read books on um, on bookkeeping and ancient and ancient bookkeeping. And I had read a book called On Masters in Management about the different plantations in um, the South and how they um, kept track of people's productivity um, and how people landed on the balance sheet as an asset right next to um, you know, livestock or equipment. Um, and these were enslaved people. And um, so like a sugar plantation looks very different than a tobacco plantation, an indigo plantation looks different than a cotton plantation. Um, I chose the cotton plantation. I grew up in the South. Um, I was surrounded by tons of cotton. So I know what it looks like when it's green, you know, when I would read literature and they would talk about, you know, cotton, I'd be like, oh yeah, this is a fiber I know something about. Um, and I, um, there was one exemplar of the form C in this book. And it just hit me that, um, you know, people are, people were property in our country and are still property in other countries right now. Um, and um, that um, portion of how we value people, like a quota for an enslaved person was a hundred pounds of cotton to di a day, um, regardless of size, regardless of age, regardless of ability, even a pregnant woman had to pick a hundred pounds of cotton a day in the hot sun. Um, and so, um, when that was the quote, that was the baseline. And when I think about modern accounting and how people still have quotas that they have to meet and people still have, you know, you know, have to meet this, this demand to do a thing to and just to keep their jobs. And whereas they can't be beaten anymore and they can't be sold, but their worth in the world is based on so much of this quota. Um, and so, um, this piece put me in the zone, like I hit this art zone where, you know, like every day I just worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And um, yeah, and so everything's hand cut stencils, um, all the lettering, all the cotton bowls, um, all the all the ink, you know, <laughs> like I did all of this um, by hand. And then when I sewed it together, I was really looking for the darks and the lights and how to, um, you know, just present all of that. So I was so thrilled to be, um, to, I had two pieces in the show and I was so thrilled to win first place. I, I just walk up to random people on the streets in Berkeley and go, I won first place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, it's a little uh, new for me. So, but I thank you so much, Georgia, for seeing, um, for seeing me. The other thing I would say is I think it's, I really took into account that you chose Indigo as the background because it is another long, it's, certainly a long time um, dyeing technique, but it was also a very difficult technique. It, indigo vats could be very treacherous. And so I took into account everything you did and not just what was print, what you put over the um, squares, but the, your choice of squares. Well, it has a lot more meaning to me now after hearing the story. That's for sure. <laughs> that's what you. That's what you need. I only get to see the images, but that's that's what you need is the story behind it. It's it's wonderful. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate it. 
Thank you. That that is amazing. And moving on to best of show. Um, is Bob here? Uh, yes, he is. Let me see if I can spotlight. I, for some reason, my spotlighting ability has. Uh, has if Bob appeared. would speak up, I'll find him. Okay. I'm over here. I is my. I think I'm off. Oh, there, there he is. is. So, Bob, Hello, you, Bob. Did, you entered Hello. several. You entered several pieces, and um, I know a certain amount about thread and using it as painting and your ability to get depth and your perspective it just this piece just kept i kept coming back to it and coming back to it your color palette your perspective um you know it's they're very simple shapes and yet so complex in how you did them and they really talked to me extremely about the idea of uncommon threads because you took and you created basically this could be a sculpture in real life and you mm -hmm. made it have dimension through just the use of thread and color. So very well done. I wish I could see it in person. I think it's, it's, it's on this, it's just 12 by 12. Um, but I can only imagine what it took for you to plot this out and then actually construct it. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, uh, yeah, I was very surprised when I opened my email. Uh, <laughs> that same thing. And it, the uh, it was uh, overwhelming, and thank you very much. I appreciate the um, accolades and things. And yeah, I'm a sculptor by trade. I weld steel mostly, and I teach sculpture in high school. And uh, so, out of my drawings, of, I have sketchbooks pretty much in every room in the house, and I just draw whenever I can. When I'm sitting down. So uh, the way light plays across surfaces is really kind of one of my things that I draw, uh, obviously, in 3D, trying to render 3D. And uh, yeah, so this is like nine values of Guterman thread, and I use three different sewing machines, Asmo 1530 Berninas, and I load them up with different values. Actually, what I also do is I take and uh, I've taken the feed dogs off my sewing machines because I don't sew regular things and um, I just thread paint most of the time. But I'll put uh, I'll change attentions also, which for true quilters will be really bad, I realize. <laughs> but uh, I'll take the bobbin. I have five different bobbins. And each one of them is a quarter turn loosened on the bottom. And then I just increased the tension on the top so I can actually thread paint with two values or two colors at the same time. Wow. So I'll have, with three sewing machines, I'll have six different values, in this case of gray. And uh, so um, I'm kind of just adjusting the tension. So I'm playing it kind of like, I don't know if anybody remembers old Boog synthesizers and way back in rock and roll, but they had the dial that you would push back and forth to create the sound. So my foot's on the pedal, my hand is on the top tension. And so I'm just kind of always dancing it back and forth, increasing and decreasing the tension to be able to blend the, the thread together. Mm -hmm. So it's just now that, that would make a wonderful video, Bob, of you <laughs> of you doing that with music in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I think yeah. about that. <laughs> Now I could put on some old deep purple albums that I there have. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, um, you know, there's pieces that I have that have 20 miles of thread in them. So, I'm, you know, when I really start to do a big piece, I just throw all the uh, plastic containers into one box and then I count it up later, you know, just to see. I don't do it for every piece, but. Uh, especially when I'm doing the big pieces like 40 by 40 or something like that. Wow. Wow. Tremendous. Well, thank you. I appreciate and, and, it very much. And, and well worth the award. That's for sure. Well, it's very exciting. I, I thank you all and for everybody who participated in the show. Everything looks great. It's a great show. Yeah. To be and so um, well chosen and well done, everybody. Where do you live? Well, thank Walt? you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I, I lived about 35 miles north of Houston, Texas. Okay. Oh. I teach in a high school. It's a public high school, pre-K through 12. Or no, it's not public. It's a private school now. Mm -hmm. But I've been teaching about 44 years. So 
approaching my last year, retirement age is next year. Oh, wow, wow. Well, congratulations. So I'm, I'm curious, Bob, how you let, went from sculpture, which you sound like you do welding and metal, to thread painting, which is such a complete, it gives the same impression, but it's very much working on a two-dimensional surface. Um, so I'm just curious, what drew you to get involved in thread painting? Well, I'd, um, years and years ago, I built uh, like large kites. I have one kite that has like uh, 3,000 pieces in it and oh. uh, various colors. And I used to fly them around the world. So I had a no home, uh, it was a new home, 1986 new home that didn't have a reverse in it. Uh, so I've been sewing like quilt patterns. Mm. And my, so they were just large quilts, nine by nine feet. Uh, I use inner city block, tumbling blocks. Uh, as the quilt surface. And actually my team called the Junction Kite Club was invited in 90, 1994 to fly at the very first China all kite, world kite fly. And oh. um, because quilts were the only indigenous uh, material or craft to grow up on the North American continent, everything else was imported. And mm -hmm. so America doesn't have a kite. Every other country has a kite type. So we got invited because we were using all quilt patterns on all of our kites. And uh, that was like 19 days in China. It was pretty cool. But uh, then I, the last piece that I built was an 18 foot steel piece and I uh, wound up wrecking my shoulders. So I've had mm -hmm. shoulder surgeries uh, and, uh, and I needed to keep making art. And so I thought, you know, what's going to get me making art for the next 30 years? And, I had that old sewing machine and now I have four sewing machines, <laughs> but uh, wow. it's grown up. I think the first fabric piece I made was in 2007 for a show called Men of Biblical Proportions put up, uh, curated by Ruth Harris. And it traveled around for a little bit. And that was the first fabric piece I made. Um, and uh, and I, I just, you know, I love looking at quilts and so, but yeah, so uh, fabric and thread was just lighter. <laughs> and so I could keep, <laughs> I could keep right. making art. And, uh, yeah. and like I say, these are really resemble uh, the value range and things that I would draw in all my sketchbooks anyway, for 3D pieces. And uh, yeah, thread just has been what I've been doing since 07. You're a very well-balanced man dealing well, with steel and thread. Actually, I, I, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, I had a show, uh, it was called the Lennon Requiem, John Lennon, the Requiem quilt, which was in the George R. Brown uh, uh, quilt show. And I just finished a uh, 27 foot steel piece uh, exactly four miles away from it. So when I would drive down to the quilt show, I would drive past that huge steel piece. And I was like, I love the fact that three miles away, I have fabric and I have right. and yeah. I, thought, yeah. I was like, you know, that's got to be a record or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, uh, we have a question. What do you teach? I, I teach right now. I teach sculpture uh, oh. mainly, uh, but I've taught everything from, uh, I mean, I used to be an AP painting teacher. I was a photography teacher for 20 years, taught ceramics for 30 years. Uh, and, but, you know, I've just been teaching art uh, all that time. So pre-K through 12, and then I taught uh, graduate school glass blowing. I'm a glass blower. And so I, I, I wow. taught that in graduate school. Bob, you are a Renaissance man. I just yeah, never met, <laughs> no, not, I just never met a media I didn't like, so. <laughs> I think you should get a bumper sticker and put that on your car. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way I it's the way I start every class with my students. You're looking oh. at a guy <laughs> who oh, never met a media he didn't like. <laughs> that is wonderful. That's wonderful. I think if I crawled into your brain, I would be very comfortable there. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 um, no. <laughs> it's a scary place. <laughs> So, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I always, I always, I have seven total. Usually, I'm doing seven totally different series, and so I just move from. I'm not ADHD, but I do move from each one when I get stuck, and so I have, you know, uh, like seven series that I just keep playing them, 
back in oh, June. Oh, wow. So, wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. Thank you. Um, I'm well, thank you for entering. Well, thank you. Um, it was a great opportunity. So uh, I appreciate it. Again, everybody who's in the show, thank you for making it a great show. And thank you for curating and putting that show together as well. Thank you again. Well, it was originally a local show when we had our brick and mortar. So all of the art that came in was local. And being able to take it to, uh, you know, a global a global reach was uh, very different for us. And um, I, I'm just I'm just amazed at 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 the the talent that's out there. Uh, it it uh, it really just wows me every time. So uh, each of our exhibits is so different, and yet. We're just getting this, the most marvelous artists um, uh, to talk about their art and to hear them talk about it is just wonderful. So uh, I thank you uh, very much. Um, now, um, Barbara, did you want to talk about some of the other art? Oh, well, what I would like to do is if any of the other artists are interested in talking about their work, uh, put your name into chat and I will find your work and you can talk about it. So I will share my screen if I can make other things go away so I can get to where I can share it. Okay. And uh, if you could just, oh, Felicia Reed. Okay, let me find you here. It looks like here you are. Nope, that's not Felicia Reed. Nope. Okay. Reset. Oh, I see. Reed Wire was there. Here is Felicia Reed. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Uh, are you muted or? Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I'm, I'm just so excited and grateful to be a part of this exhibit. I don't think that I have um, seen so many wonderful fiber art pieces in an exhibit or a collection. And I kind of make my rounds very well in that um, arena. And uh, this piece here is wet felted on a vintage silk sari. It's called Whimsical. It was made uh, in 2020 as an answer to um, the pandemic. I was asked to interpret uh, the time that we are in uh, or were, were in and probably still are for some, to some degree. And I just said that, you know, we're going to be okay. We're going to get through it. Things will be different. It's a whimsical time, time for healing. So wrap up in one of my wraps, um, get your artwork out. And uh, this is actually an award-winning piece. And it is uh, in this exhibit and it's being packed up and heading to the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Art uh, this, uh, this month to take place in an exhibit there. So I'm very honored to be here and congratulations to all the winners and to all of those that are featured in the exhibit because when one wins, we all win. Thank you. Uh, it looks like uh, Morgan, and I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, so I won't even try. Um, let me find your piece. Okay, here you are. Thank you. Um, my name is Morgan and it's pronounced Sictish. Uh, I'll just share a little bit about my current work. So I'm working towards um, 
my thesis, and I'm going to have a focus on crocheted sculptures. So this is um, recycled rope that I was able to get from a local marina in my area. Um, and I think I'm really just drawn to the, the sort of action of the crocheted uh, technique. So the way that you have to, um, in this sense, on this scale, you have to use your whole body to um, make the work. So as I spent hours um, with this material, as it was like heaped over top of me, um, just being able to feel the weight of it really um, solidified the ideas that I was thinking about behind it um, and how this craft is commonly associated with uh, feminine duties. Um, but I was using a more industrial type material. So um, yeah, I'm just trying to bridge some of these gaps that are um, existing right now in uh, the art world. I, I, I don't think we, I don't think uh, we could really grab the immensity, the size of this thing. You have to really think about 45 by 52 by one. I mean, that's that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah, it's definitely a feat to uh, move it around in these different positions. So it's just the one piece, and it's just displayed differently. Um, yeah. Beautiful, but really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Now, someone sent me a direct message, but you didn't tell me your name. So I don't I think know. It was Felicia. Felicia, was it Felicia? No, uh, oh. Felicia already spoke. This is someone oh. who said I would be willing to share about my process, but uh -huh. I don't know who it's coming from. Angelina? Let me try that. Uh, Barbara, if you can hear me, we've got quite a few. Oh, people yeah, it's me. Hey. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, you have those what? two the wearable art and okay. the textile quilt. Which one do you want me to highlight? The wearable art, the parrotfish headdress. The second one. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Hi, you want to talk about it? Sure. So I am a fashion designer. I have a MFA from University of California, Davis in textile art and costume design. And there I studied um, sculptures, textile sculptures and making with um, wood, reed, wire, and then cloth shell over. I studied a lot of Aztec and Mayan art, and I became obsessed with ancient Mesoamerica uh, priestess costumes and looking at the transformation of fiber to fabric to fashion to ritualistic farming processes. And then the things that they worshiped and did with costume, dance, and music as performance to bring about um, an agricultural rites of passage amongst women. And then I went on to teach and I taught fashion at the Art Institute. And then I became a program coordinator. And then I um, currently am running a fashion business. I have a website called Any Mystique. It's um, up and running. You can look at more of my work there. And so now what I do is I do painted uh, garments. I also do quilted garments and I do like a mix and match. So like, if you look at this headdress, the um, pieces that come out are quilted and then I attach them to the wood and wire form and then I paint and cover it. I also use like recycled leather that I could stretch around it that helps to rubberize and keep it solid. And then I add in embellishments and surface design like feathers and beads and sequins. I do use a lot of um, faux fur. I try to be eco-conscious as well. And that's kind of why I got into quilting also because I had so much cut off. So I noticed that I was able to use triangle and rectangle and even circular pieces and create a garment with them. And so with this coat, I pretty much take a pattern and 
cut it into canvas that I would stretch over a wood frame, but instead I just sew it into my pattern piece with the other elements. And um, the pattern piece too, after painting it, you can't really see the detail, but um, it's embroidered and stitched as well. That fur is all um, thread. And um, after seeing so many people's great detail images, I wish I would have like sent a detailed image more of like the actual close up of like how much I stitch into it. But um, anyways, and um, I would say it's also a story. It's also very abstract because with the headdress, although I was inspired by like ocean, the uh, Yucatan Peninsula, the um, ocean as far as coral reefs being degraded, animal conservation and environmental conservation of plants and animals around the coastal communities. And so I kind of started to create these like anthrop anthropomorphic and zoomorphic um, costumes that tell stories. And I usually combine multiple things with a headdress and um, a neck piece and a coat or and then pants. And so that's me. <laughs> Wow. Angelina, Incredible. I would say that you did include a close up of the headpiece. Oh, did I? Okay. And, and that was really helpful to that. I appreciated that you did. Um, and for those of you who had larger pieces and did that, um, I would say from a, as we're all learning to do these online exhibitions, doing a few close up pictures and also writing your descriptions are just really essential when you can't see, like you said, I couldn't see all of your necessary details. So I appreciate what you're saying now, but I could understand where you were going and what the intention was by the close up and by what you wrote. Thank you. Yeah, and it's really, you know, the transmutation of consciousness of connecting with the earth, but then also bringing out the animalistic desires within. And then I just also wanted to stress too, I think women over time do not get enough credit for being the actual breadwinners and the farmers. And in this particular area in Mesoamerica, they had nunnery quadrangles where the women went there and they learned how to farm, how to sew, how to weave, how to make clothes, how to cook, how to take care of kids. And it was kind of like a home, eco ancient home economics, like university really. And um, I just kind of wanted to express that as far as myself, because this is my son too, who's modeling this. So I think like oh. as myself, as a journey, as a mother going to school, being an educator and a fashion designer and fiber artist, and then transitioning over to costume and theater and the fashion world, to um you know is a whole different juggernaut realm that's just a, a whole chaos and so i just wanted to say that i love the fiber art community and you all have always accepted me whereas in the fashion community they're kind of like oh you're too much you know where they're mm. expecting maybe just something simpler and so i love it when i get to gather with people who are thinking outside of just ready to wear apparel so thank you so much for putting my kind of like experimental fashions out there and acknowledging it as fiber art thank you so much thank you thank you angelina very much that was really interesting mm -hmm. very is is the coat itself very heavy or not um Does no it it's actually it? right here so it's uh -huh. hanging on just like a double peg um that i got from home depot that's probably like three inches with two hooks and i just have it hanging on a hanger with the sculpture so it's very light the sculpture oh, okay. is probably maybe three pounds because it's uh very hollow it's imagine like a wooden reed shell and then it's open underneath if i could show you this one let's see so like it's it's open here I'll put uh -huh. it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. So it's just, it's, they're very lightweight, you know? Uh huh. But yeah. And so these are super cool on the runway, you know? And <laughs> I so would imagine, the yes. fashion community doesn't really do sculpture on the runway. So I appreciate you guys for acknowledging me as a textile artist as well and not just like a fashion designer <laughs> thank you well I, I like the fact that you kind of bounce around 
that you you stay in one place for a little bit and then you bounce to another place and it bounce to another place. I think that's wonderful. Yes, thank you. I appreciate all of you. And I love seeing all this work. It's so inspiring, so inspiring. And oh, I know how many hours it takes too. So I appreciate all the hours everybody puts into their work. Bye. Very good. Bye. Very good. Thank you, Bye. Uh, Barbara. Thank you. If, yeah. Barbara, if you can hear me, um, I can. We've got a Samantha. I don't know if right. we've got two Samanthas. I but think we, it's the same Samantha. Okay, we need us. Uh, we Let need to check. get Samantha's work up here. Okay. Yeah, I think there's just one Samantha, and it's me. <laughs> All right. Okay, you have three pieces in. Which one would you like me to enlarge? Um, how about the middle one? Okay. Go I ahead. So um, I'm kind of like Bob in that I haven't met a medium that I don't like either. So I'm mostly in the fiber arts, but I really just like learning and trying new things and experimenting and learning the rules of something so that then I can break it in however I see fit. So um, this piece I especially like, um, it's actually the first rug hooking piece I've ever made. And it's made with uh, all reclaimed materials. So nothing here was new. Um, the burlap is from a thrift store, the wool. Um, I cut up some skirts and then used other pieces of wool that were left over from a uh, woolen mill in their processing. Um, and even to the string on the back was from a thrift store and the hanger to actually hang it on the wall. I used um, a fruit basket piece of plastic and tied wire around it. So I just really wanted to, a lot of my pieces end up being about the environment and kind of the balance between the natural world and our man-made world, I guess, um, which seem to be existing kind of in two separate ways often. Um, my degree is in evolutionary biology, so that's my background. So it often finds its way out into a lot of my art. Um, and this one, I'm just, it's interesting to think as we're walking down the street and all this asphalt and pavement and things that we use to cover up the world to make our own way. And then always the plants um, and nature is finding its way to come back through and exist how it wants to exist. So mm -hmm. um, I like to draw, I don't know, similarities between finding a way to use the materials that we already have and that we've made and to repurpose things with also the world and the nature finding a way to overcome the damage that we've done to it. So yeah, that's that's this piece and the other ones, the other two feature both plastic and wool, um, trying to combine them in a way to find a sense of balance to kind of say that we need, we can, yeah, I like this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> integration, I um, put some plastic mesh um, and plastic and wool, if you've worked with them, you'll know that they don't normally, they're not friends. Um, and so I had to be very deliberate about um, being able to get the wool to stay with the plastic to fully integrate with this to become a standing vessel. And it's a it's a bit of a delicate balance as it is with us in the world. So hmm. beautiful, beautiful work. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess Bonnie Corr. Yes. Next. Uh, you also have, you have two pieces. Which one would you like me to enlarge? Are you here, Bonnie? Bonnie? I guess she must have left. She was here a minute ago. No, let me, yeah. Let me Sarah, see if... I just unmuted myself. Oh, good. <laughs> you can ask Carolyn which one she'd rather speak to. Well, we should, Bonnie, why don't we go with... Why don't you talk a little bit more about the spirit messenger because it's such an unusual piece, and I know I um, that's what I would pick it anyway. Yes, yeah. I mean your your vessels were also lovely, but this is really met the the title of uncommon threads and thinking this out. And so you, I would love to hear a little more about your process. Okay. Um... Would you like to hear about a little bit about the, the meaning on the piece as well? Oh, or? yeah, sure. Yeah, no, all of it, but don't leave okay. out your there's, process. There's two sides from it. 
on it. Um, one is the garden angel with the um, infant. And then the opposite, opposite side is um, the dove uh, with the olive branch. And this piece was completed, oh, I would say around May of this year. And it was kind of to hopefully celebrate that we were coming away from um, all of the viruses uh, that uh, have been happening. So I wanted some positive feelings and hopefully uh, draw people to make them feel better about themselves and, and about hope. Um, this is a, a technique that I uh, recently developed using perforated aluminum, um, which is the arch piece. And I um, insert, um, I shred a, a, a book, which I've used um, a book on uh, modern art. And I use the uh, color plates within the shredded book to make up the imagery that goes through almost like needle pointing into the perforated aluminum. It's amazing. It, it takes hours and hours and hours. Oh, I can imagine. Each, each selection of the shredded uh, book, you're selecting like just a pixel. Wow. You don't have a picture of the other side, do you? Uh, I do. I don't know if I included it in the No, show. It, it really is an amazing piece. So thank you for talking yeah. about it. It really is beautiful. Thank you. Um, looks like Diana Shore. Diana, are you you're here? Uh, oh, wonderful. <laughs> Are you here, Diana? Yes. Um, the, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, about the, the photo because uh, you really can't tell by this. I, if I would have had another photo to show the, the three-dimensional component to it, um, because the feet are extended maybe like five inches from the background. Wow. And, wow. and they're on springs that I, I wound the, the, the wire to create these springs. And, and so they can wobble a little when you walk by. So hmm. I really hadn't thought of all these issues um, when I sent the photo. But, but if I if I were to show the side view, then you could see how these feet are dangling. And and uh, the other thing you don't really appreciate in the photo is the the screen. The this is supposed to be uh, feet just leaping out out of the window, and the screen is as is broken. But I'm I'm noticing at least from here. Um, that screen is not that obvious either. So my idea was that the, uh, after being locked up in prison, it felt like for so long, and, and we had that small window of time when we were, we thought that it was okay and we were gonna be normal again and, and we had our vaccine and, <laughs> and it was gonna be a fun life. And I could just see not being able to wait and just making a leap out the window. And in the background is, um, is actually um, a piece from a figure drawing that I did, uh, I, I think, with Adria. So, so that's, that is the background in that, that, solemn, um, that solemn pose um, after being in that, that kind of a enclosed feeling for a year and then just leaping out. So, um, Eat first. That's right. <laughs> that's 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 uh, that explanation helps a lot, mm -hmm. and I wish I could see the side of it. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you, Diana. I don't see thank anybody you. else's name. Does anyone else have I missed anyone? Did we do Angela Malone? Yes, please. Oh, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to bed there soon. You are. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hello, everybody. Um, this is my this is my one of my final MA pieces. Um, it's made of uh, ceramic tiles um, patchworked together with pieces of fabric. Um, I shredded up my old clothes because we were stuck in a lockdown and I couldn't get them to the charity shop. So <laughs> I was on my MA and I started it at the beginning of the pandemic and I've only just finished it. So this piece was kind of created throughout the whole of the pandemic. I've, just before we had lockdown, I'd only been on the MA for a couple of months and we went to an exhibition where there were the G's Bend quilts and I was so stunned by the beauty and the pathos of those quilts. I came home and within a couple of weeks we were locked down and I couldn't get access to any materials at the university and I had to make these projects and I had to use what I had indoors. And because I'd recently bought a kiln and I was experimenting with various different clays, I've got lots of different types of clay indoors, earthenware, porcelain, all sorts. And I couldn't think of how to make anything except to use bits of clay. And I thought, well, I'll make something completely absurd and ridiculous in the form of a G's Bend quilt. So I kind of was inspired by them. I wrote on all of the pieces and I wrote what was around me. So the things that I wrote on there were what I heard on the news, things about the pandemic and mm. the fact and figures about things like body bags and the numbers of people that were being hospitalized, but also ridiculous things like at one time there was a debate about whether or not you could have a scotch egg in a pub and would that count as a meal to have an egg um, so that people could get around the rules of whether you could eat together in pubs or would it not? <laughs> ridiculous debates as well as maddeningly um, impossible figures and, and strange words that we'd never heard of before and strange terminologies. So I wrote those down on each one of the tiles by hand and fired them all in the kiln. Uh, one side of the kiln of the tiles was impressed from my living quarters here when I was trapped indoors. So there are things like impressions of door handles and um, various picture frames and bits and pieces from around the house. Uh, and then I just tied them all together and made the most ridiculous thing I could think of, which was a coat, because I thought <laughs> it would be the worst kind of coat you could ever have. It's far too heavy, far too fragile. It wouldn't keep you warm or dry. Um, yeah. And it would just be ridiculous, which felt like the situation that I was trapped in here. So, and the weirdness of the pandemic being so life-threatening and also in some ways completely funny and ridiculous and bizarre the way that people were speaking. So I, I, it's really a diary uh, and it is actually full, full size. Um, so yeah, thank you to G's Bend. And I was born in Brooklyn in New York and came here when I was four. So I've always been interested in American politics and there's quotations from American politicians there because you were having all of your um, elections and I was closely following those and also the black voters matter, black, black votes matter yeah. as well. So there's quotations from that as well. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very pleased to be in your exhibition and delighted that it's an online one because there's no possible way I could get this coat over to you to be in right. an exhibition. Right, right. <laughs> so it's a perfect opportunity to share this weird art with somebody else. <laughs> so thank you. It's, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. Beautiful colors as well. Thank you, it's completely random that just yeah. was be what what I was throwing out, really. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? 
Thank you for staying up with us, Angela. Yes, must, thank it you. Must, it must be about 0215 oh, oh, there. Yes. And Bill as well. And Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Red eyed next Bye. to me. Thank you. Good nice seeing to you. Me too. Oh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> We're going to go to bed now. And thank you for choosing it. It was really, really lovely. I'm very delighted. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. bye, -bye. Very welcome. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs> does, does anyone else have a piece they'd like to talk about? Okay. Well, that was really, really interesting. A lot of, a lot of wonderful stuff going on in the minds of these artists that are just, it's fabulous, just fabulous. And thank you, thank you for, for entering our, our exhibit. Um, we try to make our themes or, or whatever interesting to, to the artists and, uh, um, I think our, our next one is uh, coming up in March called In the Abstract. So I'm sure that some of our fiber artists can, can enter something into that as well. We're not, we're not limiting it to 2D. So uh, 3D would be just wonderful to see your art uh, in our abstract exhibit. So uh, we'll, we'll be having the prospectus and everything up very soon uh, for that one, which starts on March 1st and goes through the 31st of March. So thank you very much. And um, it was wonderful talking to all of you. Thank you, and let's, let's wish everyone a happy holidays. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Happy uh, holiday. Solstice greetings. The remainder of <laughs> Happy New Year. Uh, let's all pray for a happy, healthy New Year's. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. And thank, thank you, everyone. Good night. For, good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Yep. Awesome. Good night. Great show. Good, good night. night. Thank you.